Thanks, everyone, and uh, also thanks for the talk, great talk. And I'm Xiangna from Homo University. Now it's a postdoc research fellow. And today I will talk about site related heterogeneous microbial interaction, and uh, especially for our new method called NIGMO, which is a nutritional where graphical mixture of expert model. So I think all of us know that gut microbiome that is very important to us, and uh, it will relate to disease and health. And one of the key questions is that we have a lot of factors that will affect our gut microbiome. For example, size, ge geography, as well as a lot of things such as the drug we take. And this will not only affect our relative abundance of our gut microbiome, as well as the correlation between the gut microbiome. And uh, in our talk, we will uh, specially focus on diet. That is a famous thing. We are what we eat, and what our diet will closely relate to our microbiome. And the relationship between diet and microbiome is quite complex. And a lot of studies here show that, for example, high fiber diet or dietary fiber, or in, in modern paper, they said that it is diet fiber instead of this high fiber, high fiber diet will change the microbiome. And uh, to summary, a uh, quick, quick summary is that relationship between diet and microbiome are complex and very heterogeneous. So based on these slides, what we know is that a lot of research, they're trying to see how this heterogeneous relationship are, always try to split based on high fiber diet or low fiber diet or high carb diet, low carb diet or high fat diet, low, carb, low fat diet, based on the nutrients we intake. And for the cohort study, which the nutrition information always get from food, food frequency questionnaire, as well as the micro data, microbiome data always from the 16S or metagenomics data. And here we always have the observational study instead of we do the experiment. And in such case, a lot of uh, another type of the research, uh, a, lot, uh, a lot of research also doing the similar strategy, which is trying to split the cohort based on their diet intake. For example, in this, in this example, we use the fiber as a split, uh, try to split the cohort based on the fiber. And we can see the upper one will have the low fiber intake and the lower one will have the high fiber intake group. And then they do the analysis within this low fiber group and high fiber group. And here's two questions. One is that we always focus on one nutrient at a time instead of we consider nutrition as a, um, as, as a multivariate case. Second one is how to decide this high or low. That is another question. For this question, we previously developed a method called NEMO, which is published in this year. And uh, it used a data-driven method called mixture of expert model and to achieve two goals. One is to identify diet sub-cohort with different relationship between microbiome and the health state. For example, in the high protein, in, in the paper, we find that two latent group, one is high protein, low carb, second one is low protein, high carb. And we're trying to use these two groups and identify this latent group where the microbiome and the health state that are different. Second one is that we, based on this different state, we're trying to discover diet specific microbial signature of disease. In this state, we use, a, in this case, we use a Parkinson's disease as a illustration. And uh, we discover that some diet specific microbial signature of Parkinson's disease. And the NEMO model composed of two parts. And we, we give a quick review. One is a feeding network. Another one is expert network. Gating networks serve as a partition to the latent class, and that is how we also call the intertype. Gating network trying to identify diet sub cohort using nutrition data, and the expert network, which is more like focus on this sub, sub cohort and then doing the model for this microbiome and the health state within this sub cohort. Such as in the gating network, we have high protein low carb, and we will focus on this high protein low carb group. All of this feeding network and expert network will determine by data and uh, how to split the nutrition and how to split the sample, which is totally dependent on the data. So there's a quick illustration. We are supposed we have a patient and we know their nutrition intake. Then it goes to the gating network. Gating network will decide which expert it should go to. For example, in this one, we will go to expert two. And expert two focus on this previously known from this sub cohort and decide what it, whether it is health or disease based on this microbiome of this patient. And for example, this one is kind of blue, more like health, and finally decided the health intake. Okay, this is a NEMO, and if you are more interested in, please refer to the, refer to the previous slides we had the paper already published. And in this case, 
A type not only shifts the microbial relative abundance, as we previously listened, and another one that is the co-abundance network also changed based on this type. And here the paper shows that high carbo diet and the high fat diet, their network are very different. So the key question here we're trying to answer is that for cohort study, can we discover under what diet condition the gut microbiome co-abundance network are different? which says that different diet intake will change the relationship between microbiome. And for example, this microbiome co-work together for this state, but for another state, their correlation will change. To this end, we develop a method called NIGMO, which is a nutritional where graphical mixture of actual model. So what we did is that uh, besides previously slides, we use an expert for the nutrition intake. Here, we try to see here, expert focus on the correlation structure which is expert, the correlation structure will change. And getting network still serve for the partition of population into sub-cohorts based on nutrition intake. And expert model use a graphical class to imposing sparsity on their abundance relationships. And uh, finally, we use a joint optimization for this uh, both getting network and expert network. And uh, here is we apply NICMO on real-world microbial study, which is our previous data, which has uh, two conditions. But we will do not focus on this uh, disease condition, but more focus on the microbial relationships. And what we have is put frequency questionnaire and uh, summarized to 25 nutrition feature and the 16S microbial, uh, 6 S sequence, and uh, have the microbial feature which summarize uh, process uh, to this level, different levels. And uh, for detail of this data, we can see, uh, you can also refer to this paper. And uh, for the result, first one, we're trying to see here, we've got two latent class. And the two latent class, why we have this two latent class, we can see the coefficients here. Energy and the fiber, which contribute a lot to separate these two latent class. So we call this high energy, high fiber group and low energy, low fiber group. And this PC, PCA plot shows that on the nutrition space, we split this one by the two latent class. The left, left one is a high fiber, high energy group and right is low energy, low fiber group. So why we split to this group? And we can see, first one, there are networks that are different. There are microbial network, which for example, here is negative correlation and the right one is a positive correlation. And the association here will be negative and positive we are dif that are different. And uh, for this two graph, each node represents a microbiome and the association here that is very different, but we still see some so association that is consistent. And uh, for this one, we may not easily see what is the difference. We focus on these two. One is Blosha and uh, Picali bacterium, and another one is Ecclesia, and another one UCG002, which is also a known thing for the 16S. And uh, why we focus on this one, we previously uh, identified this Picali bacterium that is quite important to this PD state. And so we're trying to see, we're trying to show that the scatter plot, which is very different, which is we're trying to see that the relationship between these two taxa that is quite different. And the x-axis is the uh, Axine transform. Also, you, we can also use CR transformation and other transformation. And we can see low energy, low fiber group, there's no relationship between these two taxa. But for the high energy, high fiber group, we can see the correlation change. That is what we're trying to see, the relationship that is heterogeneous. In the high fiber, high energy group, their relationship increased. And we can also see from the table here, the low energy, low fiber group, their correlation is uh, around 0.14 and 0.92, which is Pearson's and the spearmass correlation. And the high energy, high fiber group, we can see an increase in, increase in this correlation. So what we can summarize here, that is NIGMO could identify diet subcohort with different microbial co-abundance structures, which we see that there's on the low energy, low fiber group, there's no correlation for these two taxa. But high energy, high fiber groups, this, uh, there is an increased correlation here. And the, finally, we validate this result uh, larger group data set, which is American Gut Project. And uh, we select several data, which one is the high dietary information, or we cannot use. And also we try to see this age larger than 50, which, with, which is matching to our previous one, and which result in this 500 plus samples. And what we do is just like previous slides, we're trying to project their nutrition intake into our model. And we see, split this one as a high fiber, low fiber, low energy group, and high fiber, high energy group. And we can still see this one, the increase of this correlation for this two taxa. So what we're trying to 
uh, take, take home message for this one is high fiber intake may lead to an increased correlation between the short chain fatty acid relative to microbiome, which we select this several things. So in summary, we propose a new method called NICMO. And uh, the aim is trying to identify sub cohort of different microbial correlation co abundance networks, which is uh, within one group, they have their own co abundance network. And it uses a regularized mixture of expert model and also a graphical lasso. Finally, we use the MM algorithm for optimization. And uh, we try, I also trying to point out here that is uh, our NIC model also can also extend to other heterogeneous relationships. For example, if we focus on identify that sub cohort that have different relationship between microbiome and metabolite, we can always we can also just change the data to the microbiome and the output to the metabolites. And the package now is available on GitHub. And uh, that's everyone. And uh, that is all for my talk. Okay, you have time for one or two questions. Okay, I, you showed two different slides where you had, on both slides you had two networks and you said they're different. Yeah. I mean, it was kind of hard to see that they were different because they look so jumbled. But I guess you also compute some kind of graph. But this one's easier to see. If you look for a while, you see, oh yeah, there's a, but the other one was like two big networks. Oh, um, that is from literature. Okay. Yeah, I was just, yeah, that kind of thing. I mean, it's not obvious to me that, yeah, you kind of see there's more color in the one, but. <laughs> yeah, that is from the literature, and which shows that different diet condition will have different networks. Yeah, they have yeah. Computed several different, such as topology, topology uh, characteristics for these two networks. Okay, yeah. yeah. Other questions? Yes. You have to use a microphone so that, no, but people who are watching online won't hear you. Thanks for your talk. Um, maybe a bit of a question, a little bit outside the talk, but you say these networks are very different. What does that mean? What does it mean for health, for example? Yeah, uh, for the health, what we can see here, for example, these two types of, and just as we previously know, uh, our previous results show that basically bacterium and the blusha, which is very important for the PD, which is they are consistent, stably low without the diet. But what we see here, if you focus on these two, they are co-work together. And uh, if we have low fiber intake for the patient, their correlation will may be not high and may not be, if you treat this one, may not be as a group, but for the high, high fiber group, they are co-work together and maybe produce something that is important for health. 